Who has been spending more time than usual at home this year? Would you like to make your home a little bit more comfortable? Would you like to do this with free technology, giving you the flexibility to customize while ensuring the manufacturer can't snoop on the way you live? Let us consider a basic example, lighting. The typical light bulb has the same intensity throughout the day and night. Using bright light in the morning can help get you up and working, while using dim red light after dinner can help you sleep better. Who doesn't want to sleep better? If your city is in lockdown, or if you have personally been ordered to quarantine after returning from travel, it can be pretty tough spending 24 hours per day at home. A creatively designed lighting system can help you trick your mind to believe you are in a different place at different times of the day and night. Just about any home automation system, including the free solution we are looking at today, will allow you to specify times when lights wake you up and when they dim down after dinner. When you delegate little chores like that to your equipment, it helps you to maintain a healthy routine and it also means you can focus on bigger things. Let's roll up our sleeves and get started. There are a multitude of home automation protocols out there. Some products simply use regular Wi-Fi networks. Most products are using one of the two protocols dedicated to home automation, Zigbee and Z-Wave. Z-Wave is restricted by patents and some of the most popular products such as the Philips Hue light bulbs, use Zigbee. So we're going to focus on Zigbee. We can use just about any GNU Linux based device to control our home automation network. For example, it could be a Raspberry Pi, an Intel Nook, a Taurus Omnia router, or a HP microserver. To connect our free operating system to our devices, we can integrate the Demotic software with a proprietary hub, or we can bypass the hub and use a Zigbee stick, a Zygate, to transmit directly to our gadgets. I prefer the simplicity and privacy of using the Zygate, and that is what I'll demonstrate today. You can order the Zygate from zygate.fr. The products we have to play with here include the Raspberry Pi, the Zygate stick, a Mueller bulb from Aldi, a Philips Hue bulb, the temperature and humidity sensor, a radiator valve, before starting this workshop I already installed Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi SD card and enabled remote access to it. The first thing to do is adding the Debify repository so we can easily install Demotics, the Zygate plugin and firmware tools using familiar packages. All the commands you need are on my blog, so you can cut and paste them. Debify is a repository including packages that haven't yet fully migrated into the official Debian repository. The Raspberry Pi is now able to access the Debify repository. 
Now we need to download the firmware matching this version of the packages. There is a link to it from my blog. The last update of the packages was tested with version 3.1a. We download it into the temp directory. And then we use SCP to copy it to the Raspberry Pi. Now we can go and install the utility for flashing the Zygate firmware. There are two alternative utilities, Janic Module Programmer and Zygate Flasher. We use the former. We use apt to download and install the packages containing these utilities. Any dependencies will also be downloaded and installed at the same time for our convenience. Now we can run the firmware flashing command. We use the firmware file in the temp directory. Oops, the command failed. The Zygate is not properly plugged in. We can try again. So right now, I'm reconnecting the Zygate. And then I come back to the computer. And we'll copy and paste the same command again. This is the same command we just tried a moment ago. So this time it's really working. It's writing the new firmware to the flash in the Zygate. After flashing, we can put the lid back on the Zygate. I'm sorry about the glitches in the picture here. Something went wrong assembly. Now we install the Zygate plugin package. This will automatically install the Demotics package too. We use apt, which will fetch the packages from the Debify repository that we added at the beginning. So it's all very convenient. You can actually install the packages, test them, remove them from the system and install them again if you wish to do so. The packages are also available for standard computers and not only for the Raspbian Pi. Now that Demotics is installed, we can use the web browser to access it. It listens on port 8080 on the IP address of the Raspberry Pi.
the first thing to do when we open Demotics is enabling the Zygate plugin. We do that in the Hardware tab. We give it a name. Zygate 0. And we choose the type of plugin that we're activating. The Zygate plugin is the last option in the list. Here we can specify the time window when devices are permitted to join the Zygate network. The default is about four minutes. The blue light on the Zygate stick will be flashing when it is accepting new devices. And it will be solid when it is not accepting new devices. Notice the button on the top of the temperature sensor. We hold down the button and wait for the light on the sensor to blink three times. Now we can go back to Demotics and find the sensor. We will change the font size and window size here so you can see everything. We see three different rows for the same sensor, but we only want to use one of them. The row where both temperature and humidity are combined. Click the green arrow to add the device to our temperature page. Give it a name here. Now we begin to connect the Philips Hue bulb. We hold down the Philips remote control close to the bulb. Hold the on and off buttons until the bulb starts flashing. Now we can go and find it in the devices page. Click the green button again, give it a name. Blender loses synchronization here. On the left you can see how we control the bulb and on the right you will see the bulb changing colour after a delay of about a minute. I'm sorry about these glitches. I'll make an updated version of the recording in the days ahead. Nonetheless, if we hang on for a little bit longer we'll actually see the bulb doing what we just told it to do. Normally the latency between the web interface and the bulb is less than a second. The delay here is a delay in the video editing. It is not a delay in the communication from the software to the bulb. So something's finally starting to happen. we can see the bulb beginning to go red so we clicked red before now it's going blue there's a reminder of where we click the colors finally we're going to test a Zigbee relay switch. There's a little hole in the top. The little button inside this hole tells it to join the network. We use an insulated screwdriver to press the button and we hold it down. The light inside the switch will blink and then the relay comes on and applies power to the bulb. We go back to the Devices tab 
we click refresh to find the device we click the green arrow give it a name click the switches tab and we can click the bulb to turn the relay off and turn it back on again we can click edit and choose a different icon for example instead of a light bulb we could use the Christmas tree icon there are many other icons for heaters and fans and all the other devices okay uh, now we're back to Q&A with uh, Daniel um, Daniel um, would you have something else to add to the presentation, something that maybe you forgot and uh, would like to share with the audience? Well, to begin with, I'd suggest don't mix alcohol and electricity. Um, I'm, one of my projects that I'm working on involves rewiring an entire house in Dublin. The house is about the size of the Pristina hackerspace. And everything will be connected with Zigbee technology. So it's all open hardware and open source software for a large house. Um, this is the local Irish pub. Um, unfortunately, you're not seeing me in the picture. I, I don't know why, um, but I'm here. So, so does anyone have any questions about any of the gadgets or the software or anything else? Yeah, if anyone from the chat wants to pose a question, feel free to, uh, or we can make you, uh, give you a voice, or you can put it in writing. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, where do we source this, this Zigbee and uh, other potential equipment? Where, where's a good place to get IoT, uh, let's say, hackable IoT devices? Yeah, there's a website called zygate.fr. I just put it on the chat. Mm -hmm. You can order the Zygate stick. That's the little stick that I demonstrate. You can order it from that website, zygate.fr. Yeah, and uh, regarding the brands that are more hackable, anyone that you would recommend? Uh, when it comes to Zigbee, um, the protocol is open, so this is the radio mm -hmm. protocol. Um, mm -hmm. Each of the bulbs that I've used, and I've used bulbs from different companies, I've used the Osram bulb, I've used the Mueller Lick, which is a German manufacturer, they sell them at Aldi, and I've used the Philips Hue. So from the Zygate, they all look the same. Now, I believe some people have actually tried to re-flash uh, the bulbs as well. Um, the, oh, there's also the IKEA Tradfi bulb, which is also Zigbee. So if you're near an IKEA store, do you have IKEA in Kosovo now? Uh, no, not yet. Yeah, so they're IKEA bulbs. They're also Zigbee. They should work with the Zygate stick. Um, and you can deploy firmware to the bulb. So in theory, you could modify the firmware that runs in the bulb to make it more open. Um, I've never tried to do that, uh, but you know, the, this is the, the era of, of you know, light bulbs that have software and microprocessors in them. And if you want to hack your light bulb, you, you can, you're welcome to try and please you know, share the results. And you said Zygate costs how much? It's about 40 or 50 euro. I don't remember the exact price. And it, it depends on the way that you buy it. Um, I'll just open the website. If you're not 
in the EU, um, then they can send it to you without VAT. Now the VAT is about 20%, so you'll automatically get 20% off the price if you're having it sent outside the EU. Um, I'm just going to their shop now to check the current prices. Um, so the, the Zygate that I demonstrate in the video is 49 euro, including the tax. So it's about 40 euro without the tax. Um, so, any advancement? You, you did a presentation at Pristina Hyperspace about two years ago or at SFK, uh, another SFK, and uh, any advancements since then? How, how much progress have we had in the number of devices or perhaps uh, producers uh, using this open? Uh, Okay, so one of, yeah, one of the really interesting developments on the Zygate website is the module that goes in the DIN rail. Um, so I'll put that link into the chat. Um, so the DIN rail, one of those, it's the rail inside your fuse box where you have all the little miniature switches to control the fuses. Um, they're not mm -hmm. actually anymore. We call them mini circuit breakers or MCBs. Um, so they've now made a die gate that will go in the fuse box and it will let you control a circuit from the fuse box. And this is quite innovative. Um, it's very convenient because you can control something like a, um, a circuit for a water heating unit. You could control a, a boiler. Um, another large appliances from this unit. So that unit is about 89 euro. Yeah, so basically everything then becomes hackable from the uh, box. Yeah, there's a whole lot of this stuff that's just beginning to happen. Um, yeah. Another innovation has been the packages. The packages that I demonstrate in the video today, um, I don't think they were ready um, when I gave my talk about this before. So the packages were only made after my last visit to Pristina. The last FSFK, I went off and I made the packages. So with the packages, it's now a lot easier for people to get started. Yeah, you are the maintainer on, on those, right? Yes. So these packages are available for both the Raspbian, so you can run them on a Raspberry Pi. They're also available just for any system running Debian or derivatives like Ubuntu. Um, so you can install the packages on your laptop using the same commands that you see in the video. You don't need to go and buy a Raspberry Pi if you don't have one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, I don't know if we have any other questions or if there is something else that you would like to add. I don't have any questions myself. Um, other questions? Okay. Anything for the end, uh, Daniel? Look, it's always wonderful to participate with people in, in Kosovo. I hope to visit you again. Yeah, whenever the pandemic permits more travel. Um, and if you would like to do a practical activity with this at the hackerspace, and I know you're already doing some things with this, if, if you would like to, to have a day doing stuff like this together at the hackerspace when these types of events are possible again, I'd be very happy to visit and facilitate that. Sure, we'll consider that as soon as the uh, situation normalizes. So we hope to have you uh, soon here. So Daniel, thank you very much for the uh, interesting presentation and uh, doing some unique stuff around, uh, let's say, open IoT. So uh, uh, next we'll go, uh, we'll have 
the next presentation at uh, 11, and it's another workshop with uh, Dashamir Hoja called Simple Command Line Password Manager. And we'll be back uh, very soon with that at the top of the hour. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks, Ariane. Bye-bye.